One part of the index is the table of drugs and chemicals. And in today's video, that's what we'll be covering. Table of drugs and chemicals. This is an introduction to ICD-10-CM, the index. The third section of the main index of the ICD-10-CM codebook is the table of drugs and chemicals. This is also referred to as the table of drugs. The table of drugs lists the toxic effects of drugs, chemicals, and other substances. A toxic effect is the result of a toxin such as a chemical, medicinal, or other substance on the body. For example, the toxic effect of a chemical may be a burn of the skin. Toxic effect codes are unique because they do not identify the effect of the poisoning, like loss of consciousness or confusion, but rather the substance that caused the toxic effect, the intent of the poisoning, and the encounter. If additional signs, symptoms, or manifestations of the poisoning are present, then they should be coded in addition to the code for the toxic effect code. Toxic effect. A patient came into contact with a toxic substance that caused a burn of the skin. For this case, the coder would need to assign at least two codes, one of them being for the burn of the skin and one to identify the toxin that caused the burn of the skin. Steps to locate and assign a code for toxic effect. Number one is to identify the substance that caused the toxic effect. The table of drugs and chemicals is arranged alphabetically by the name of the substance that caused the toxic effect. So the first step is finding the code for the toxic effect and identify that substance in the table of drugs. So this is going to be just like it is when you're using the regular or the main index, you're gonna be looking for that main term. Two, intent, identify the intent of the toxic effect. After the substance has been located, the next step is to identify the intent. The intent of the toxic effect is the reason why the toxic effect happened. In the ICD-10-CM codebook, there are six different intentions that may be identified for a toxic effect code. They are accidental intent, intentional self-harm, assault, undetermined intent, adverse effect, and underdosing. The code for each intent is located in one of the six corresponding columns, and this format is similar to what, what you saw in the table of neoplasms. So the main term is going to be on the left-hand side of the columns, and there are multiple columns that identify different intentions for the toxic effect. So I'm going to go over these, intent, these different intents. So accidental intent. An accidental toxic effect is an unintentional effect of a substance that was either taken inadvertently or in excess. So for example, nausea and vomiting are accidental side effects of excessive alcohol consumption. The accidental intent is the default for toxic effect that cannot be identified as intentional, assault, an adverse effect, or underdosing. If the intent is not identified in the documentation when you are reviewing the chart, then you're gonna use the code for accidental intent. Intentional self-harm. This is a toxic effect resulting from intentional self-harm and it's due to a substance that is taken deliberately as an act of hurting oneself. For example, if a patient consumed an entire bottle of hydrocodone on purpose in an attempt to commit suicide, then this overdose would be intentional self-harm. Next, we have assault. A toxic effect that occurs due to assault is one that was purposefully inflicted upon one person by another person with the intent of hurting the, the recipient of the substance. So for example, if a person spikes someone's drink with um, the date rape drug, to cause a toxic effect, then the intent of this poisoning is an assault. Undetermined intent. An undetermined intent of a toxic effect is used only 
when the intention of the toxic effect cannot be determined to be any of the other types, which are accidental, intentional, assault, adverse effect, or underdosing. So for example, if a patient is found unconscious due to a poisoning caused by a combination of drugs and the intent of the poisoning cannot be determined to be accidental, intentional, self-harm, or due to an assault or an adverse effect, then the intent would be undetermined and that, that's what should be selected. So you're going to use this code option only when the documentation states that the intent cannot be determined. Adverse effect, an adverse effect is an unintended effect caused by a substance that is correctly prescribed and administered. Unlike an accidental poisoning, the adverse effect was caused when a patient was supposed to take a substance and did so correctly but it still resulted in some sort of unintended consequence. And then we have underdosing. An underdosing occurs when a patient takes too little of a pres prescribed substance and suffers an unintended consequence. So even if a patient purposefully underdoses, it's not coded as intentional self-harm unless the patient underdosed specifically as an act of self-harm. An example of this would be if an older patient, let's say like a 76 year old male patient did not take his entire dose of insulin because he either could not afford it or he simply calculated the wrong dose, then this would be coded with underdosing intent. Number three, verify. Verify the code in the tabular list and add the seventh character extension for the episode of care. After the intent of the toxic effect has been determined, the next step is correctly identifying a code from the table of drugs and chemicals and to add the seventh character extension to identify the encounter. Number four, check for additional codes and sequencing in the tabular list. After the correct code has been identified, additional codes may be needed to identify the manifestation of the poisoning. The manifestation of the poisoning is the sign or symptom that occurred because of the poisoning. These include the signs, symptoms, related conditions, or other manifestations that were caused by exposure to the substance. And then as always, make sure you are looking the code that you found in the table of drugs up in the tabular just to confirm that the code is correct and to complete the code itself. Example, Sam works in a family practice clinic as a medical coder. She reviews a record that states the patient was seen for an allergic reaction to amoxicillin. The patient was diagnosed with strep throat three days ago and prescribed amoxicillin. The patient was seen today for a rash from the amoxicillin. This is the first time the patient is being seen for the rash. In the first picture on the left, you can see this is a portion of the table of drugs. On the left-hand side, we have the main terms or the, the drugs listed themselves. And then we have the six columns of intent. So for this one, we're gonna be looking up amoxicillin, which I have highlighted in yellow. And we're going to follow that all the way over to adverse effect because the patient was taking this medication correctly and then had an adverse reaction. So that code is T36.0X5. And then to finish that code out, we are going to reference it in the tabular. The picture on the right-hand side is of the tabular and you can see that T36 is the category because that's only three characters. Underneath the category, it gives us this pink box and it states the appropriate seventh character is to be added to each code from category T36. So anything that starts with T36 is going to get one of these seventh characters, the A, the D, or the S. And if you remember, our code is T36.0X5. So we're going to go ahead and go down here. And as you know, ICD-10-CM Codes can contain up to seven characters. This one has six. 
So what we would do is add an A for the initial encounter, because as stated in the record, this is the first time the patient is being seen for the rash. So the complete code is T36.0X5A. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button.